Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Wendell aka BitNative with another video from Work From Home Tech. This is a updated video for the best router in 2022. We're trying to see if this is gonna be the best router in 2023. So previously I did a video. If you haven't had an opportunity to take a look at that, go ahead and take a look at the link here up above. That was on the GL iNet MT1300. This year we've got the GL iNet AXT 1800. There's a few updates. Uh, it's slightly larger. There's active cooling inside of the AXT 1800. There's also slight differences in the actual Wi Fi protocols as opposed to Wi Fi 5. We have now Wi Fi 6. There's some other improvements with the uh, MIMO protocol as well as some other things we're going to dive in and do a detailed line for line comparison. Now one important fact to note that this is not a sponsored video. Uh, this new AXT1800, I had the opportunity to pick this up with a 30% discount. We're going to go ahead and uh, identify if this is something that is actually worth the time and money to go out and purchase the new version for 2023. Let's go. So let's go ahead and jump into this review. On the left side, we've got the MT1300. On the right side, I've got the AXT1800. As I said, there's a few differences that we need to get into before we get into the line-by-line -line comparisons of both of the routers. And then from there, we'll dive into the actual hands-on performance review. All right, so the MT1300 here on the left side, you can see the component um, configuration here, which has the passive cooling as opposed to over on the right hand side. As I said, the AXT, it has actual active cooling. There's a cooling fan inside that is designed to help to keep it cool. There's a little higher temperatures. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, we've got the WPA3 uh, protocol and this DFS. Uh, it's certified in the US, UK, Europe, and Japan with slight variances. You can see the asterisk here. It says the 5G Wi-Fi Band 2 uh, currently unavailable. Now, what this dynamic frequency selection or the DFS is going to do is it's going to utilize additional frequency bands when your modem or your router actually powers up. It will try to select frequency bands that have the least amount of interference. Uh, in your Wi-Fi signal to give you the best throughput when you're utilizing it. So let's go ahead and scroll down to some of the actual items they have highlighted here between the two. So starting on the left-hand side, now that I have both of them aligned side by side, uh, you can see that most of the differences, um, or actually most of the similarities have been identified um, with the exception of the Wi-Fi 6 here versus just the Wi-Fi dual band. So, of course, both of these support uh, OpenWRT. And this is going to be pretty much the same. Um, OpenWRT comes pre-installed on both of them. Uh, there is faster VPN support uh, due to some of the processor and hardware improvements we'll get into in the line-by-line -line comparison. Uh, but as you can see here, here's that MIMO, MU MIMO over here on the right side for the AXT multi-user MIMO. Uh, there is also a difference in that DFS as well as what we'll see here in a minute. Um, when we get down into the specifications, that's where we'll actually get into the line-by-line -line comparison. Taking a deep dive into the line-by-line -line specifications, we start off with the first column listing all the specifications, and then we have the MT1300 versus the AX1800. Uh, for the first row, the interface is essentially the same with the same number of WAN ports, LAN ports, USB ports, USB-C, the SD card, uh, reset and toggle button. And then the first difference we have is in the second row where we identify the CPU for the MT1300 being a MediaTek dual core 880 megahertz processor versus the upgrade to a Qualcomm IPQ 
Q6000 1.2 gigahertz quad core processor. This is actually the predecessor processor to the new processor that will support Wi-Fi 7 coming down with speeds um, and capacities capable of doing 40 gigabits. Uh, so kind of excited, waiting to see what Wi-Fi 7 is going to bring to the table. Uh, the next line, we get into the memory slash storage. Uh, there's a difference in the memory. We go up to 512 megabytes of DDR3L memory versus a NAND flash of 128 megabytes to give you more storage for the OpenWRT operating system. Uh, next, we have the addition of the AX802.11 protocol uh, for that Wi-Fi 6. And then the Wi-Fi speed in the next row uh, there's a 600 megabits per second in the 2.4 range versus 400. And then there's the 1200 megabits per second in the 5 gig range, which unfortunately with a LAN interface of 1 gig, there may be some limitations there. Uh, the Wi-Fi antennas and the Ethernet speeds are the same as I just mentioned. The next delta is under the power input row. You can see we've gone from 3 amps to 4 amps, and that's one of the reasons why you have that additional cooling requirement, requirement and the active coolant, uh, I guess, they added. And the power consumption, of course, is going to increase, reflecting that additional amperage. Uh, we've gone from 8.65 to 8.75 watts. Operating temperature and storage temperature is the same. And then we have the dimensions, which I said the actual case has increased in size. But essentially, the weight is still low. Um, we've got 184 grams versus the new weight of 245 grams. It did increase, but it still isn't anything that is significantly painful. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual performance. So first things first, we went ahead and downloaded the latest firmware for the router. Now, there were a couple of challenges I did encounter on this. The only available Wi-Fi uh, machines I had was a Windows machine with Wi-Fi 6. Uh, unfortunately, my M1 Mac did not have Wi-Fi 6. So taking a look at the configuration of Wi-Fi 6 on the Windows machine, as you see here, it was able to get a Wi-Fi 6 connection to 802.11ax, and we we're able to connect to the router. Here we'll go ahead and log in and give it a password and log into the router. Now I did two initial tests. I did the first test is going to be on the router itself. We're going to go in here to the router and take an initial look and then we'll install some software. Uh, I have it currently connected. As you see, this IP address is a mobile IP address with a tethered uh, mobile device, the actual Mi 5 Verizon tether device. Now taking a look at the actual user interface on the router, it's pretty slick. It is OpenWRT 21.02 snapshot. This is a special version that is provided for GLINet. This was updated from 4.0 to the 4.1 and we continue to walk through here in the menu. Uh, time zone settings, the push button settings to set up the type of functionality, whether you want it to be in repeater mode, ad hoc mode, or in the hotspot mode. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple more of these settings before we install the software. Now down in the software, you go to plugins and you will get a list of the available software from OpenWRT. Uh, it will take the normal, typical OpenWRT applications. Uh, for this particular testing we're going to be doing, we're going to install iPerf3, or Internet Performance. And we'll install that, and we'll run our tests, and we'll take a look at the performance. Because that's really what we want to see if the Wi-Fi performance is really there for paying the extra cost in upgrading. So now that we have that installed, we can actually go and start doing some of our testing. 
Uh, I want to quickly just go through, check some more of these settings real quick before we actually dive into the testing. Uh, you can see the options we have here under network. You have your firewall, uh, multi-WAN, LAN, uh, some of the typical settings like DNS and the network mode itself. Like I said, router access point, there's extender, and then there's WDS. Now, one thing to also consider, some of these modes uh, like the actual DFS mode, it requires support in the router as well as your client device. Now here I'm secure shelling into the router itself. You can see the OpenWRT banner. Um, I'm checking to see iPerfs install. What I'll do is start up iPerf3 in server mode. So now it's listening on port 5201 for UDP packets. And using the laptop, using that Wi-Fi 6 capability, we begin starting the testing. And you can see it does 10 seconds worth of tests and it transferred 711 um, megabytes of actual data. So let's go ahead and try this on the Windows-based Wi-Fi 6 connecting to an actual M1 Mac that's connected through Ethernet, which is a little bit faster. You can see here, we do a first run, and I'm doing another second run. You can see the 10 attempts, and in 10 seconds, the transmission is a little bit faster. Uh, we, get, we get 858 megabits per second. So the information in this video may have gone a little quick, but if you're interested in the full setup and configuration of the router, uh, a few months ago, I did the complete setup on the MT1300. So go ahead and follow the link above and check that video out for the complete installation uh, video review I did on that. Now down to the final decision on whether this is going to be something that is worth your money and spending the extra money, especially if you're not getting it at the price of $101 versus the $130 that it is currently at right now. Uh, what I say is if you don't have the existing uh, router like the MT1300, then it might be worth the purchase, especially if you have Wi-Fi 6 devices, it might be worth the money. Uh, if you don't have Wi-Fi 6 devices, then it may not be worth it, and you may want to just go ahead and pick up an MT1300. Uh, the other thing is, if you want to go ahead and wait a little while, the new versions of the routers are that are coming out are coming out with the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, so you can actually get 2.5 gigabit Ethernet from your LAN connections. Uh, that is a limitation because you're coming in at potentially 1.2 gig over Wi-Fi and you're bottlenecking in your actual LAN connection. So maybe hold off if you're just going to upgrade the device. Uh, but if you need a device, this is definitely a good, nice travel portable device to have, uh, especially if you have Wi-Fi 6 devices. Uh, that's it for this video. Hit the like button if you like the content. Leave a comment if you have questions or if you have recommendations or suggestions for additional comment. And stay tuned for more videos on getting the work done right here on Work From Home Tech.